What's going on, peoples? Welcome to Rotor Riot. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Tommy. This specific series is called Quad Mod. Maybe you were out there with your friends and you're like, yo, Johnny, check this out, man. It's called a racing drone. Or maybe you were watching ESPN and you saw these things flying around and you're like, hey, what are these, what are these guys doing? They got these goggles on and got these things flying around, hover around like a bunch of bus, bunch of Justin Bieber fans sounding off. I don't get it. Either way, you went to Google and you typed race drone. This is what popped up. The Esheen wizard because this is probably the most search drone ever. So what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna unbox this. I'm gonna show you what's inside. I'm gonna show you how to connect this so that you can get up and flying. But more importantly, the reason why y'all gonna be here is we are going to take this quad and we are going to modify it one part by one so that you can go from being stock to being super pro performance level right up there with all the stuff that we fly here at Rotor Riot. Because you know what? Nobody wants to stay stock, man. Nobody wants to keep things default. Let's open this bad boy up and let's take a look at what you're getting. Because for $200, you're pretty much getting everything that you need. Ooh, ooh, look at that. Now, if you're first starting off, you're gonna wanna hold on to these because this is going to keep your gimbals nice and protected. Let's feel them sticks real quick. Mm, mm -hmm. Not bad, doable, doable. Take a look at this. Again, you're getting everything that you... Hoi, hey, shh. You got your charger cable that goes with that. We got a battery, 3S, 1500 milliamp battery. All right, I can tell you right off the bat, might wanna upgrade that. A bind tool. All right, this is what's gonna help us connect your radio to the quad. We got a couple of zip ties because everybody needs zip ties. Some prop nuts, and it looks like we got some silver ones and black ones. Some of these are clockwise and counterclockwise. Landing feet, all right, so that's gonna go underneath your quad. And we got some super cute Tools. Look at this! How cute is that? It looks like we got some uh, some spare screws and we've got an antenna. Oh, look at this. I already see an update point. This is going to be a good update point. So it comes with a linear antenna and we'll get to more on why that's not really the best thing a little bit later. Let's go check out this quad. Now the great thing, oh, look at that. Look at them edges right there. It's lined with uh, looks to be some uh, paint marker. It looks really good. I'm quite impressed. It comes with these nice motor protection plates. That, see, guys, guys. Something like this, as simple as this, motor protectors will go a long way, especially for people new to the hobby, unless you crash into things and just keep going. Well, we've got our drone, our racing drone, laid out nice and neat. We're just gonna put everything that needs to go on the quad, charge the batteries. It's gonna be the quickest B-roll montage you've ever seen. <laughs> This kit did not come with any type of battery pad and you definitely want a battery pad because one if you look at this you got these exposed button head screws and furthermore when you do put a battery on here see this this is like slip and slide bro you land and crash this thing just it just slides off like that so what I'm gonna recommend get yourself some um grip and what this will do keep your battery from sliding or forwarding or moving or combusting or breaking you see that not going nowhere we are now outside. Now I have got my mini quad, my Ishin Wizard. I've got the props on, I've got the batteries charged. I've got everything set up the way it would be coming out of the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the radio. It's always radio first, ladies and gentlemen. Then we're gonna go ahead and plug in the battery. All right, I've got my goggles on. Let's find out what this thing does right out the box. Taking off, woo, and we got <laughs> we got auto level. So this is how it comes out the box. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fly it with auto level on, kind of feels weird but hey this is what to expect all right let's check out this power Ooh, ooh! oh yeah that's right I can't I can't do an s flip <laughs> I can't turn more than like 30 degrees all right so I am gonna say that right off the bat this camera is really really narrow uh, I could see somebody wanting this if the thing that they want to do primarily is like shoot gaps because it makes that look all like natural. Let's see if I can shoot this gap right here. Oh, nope, 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 nope. And I'm guessing I don't have turtle mode. <laughs> all right, let's go walk over there. Uh, it's very zoomed in and focused. Uh, most cameras these days run a wider lens. And the reason for that is because you just want to be able to see all around you. 
and the other thing is is the light changes aren't uh i mean it's pretty light out here but going in you know where the shaded area is at and where it's lit uh, it definitely has a, a little bit of time before it adjusts so all right not a big deal guys we'll go ahead and take it back in uh, i've already got a good feel for it i mean the 3s power again you know coming from 4s leaves a little bit to be desired but if you're new to the hobby 3s is plenty so let's go back to the table and let's go talk about what i would do next the camera i think that's the first thing that i'm going to change and what i'm going to go with is the rotor riot fox here predator camera and what this is going to be able to do as you can see it's got this nice bigger lens it's got a 1.8 millimeter lens because the lens that's on there is like this what we call like sniper vision style you just like see this much the reason why i'm gonna suggest that you go with the bigger camera is so that you can see everything around you oh, that's right so not only do you want to be able to see a little bit wider but the light transition changes right so going from somewhere light to somewhere dark what you'll notice is that the light transitions take a little bit of time in fact you probably see in this clip where I'm behind a tree and as I pop out to the right and you can see the sun first of all the sun is just this black dot and then it takes a little bit of time for everything to kind of adjust the wide dynamic range isn't as fast on this camera so that's going to be the other main and critical reason that you want to go ahead and change your camera one of these little Phillips screwdrivers we're gonna pop this guy off and that comes off like so let's set that to the side so we don't lose it there's another one on this side now you know one thing I also think you should probably do maybe you take off the prop just so that it's not in the way like this but I'm a little bit of a lazy guy you know I just like to just ah, let's just get at it you've got the screws out now you've got your camera all you gotta do is just pull it out very simple like so you're gonna notice you've got one cable here pop that off like so so you got that camera off but what you're going to find is that that connector this one is super old school as you can see it's a little bit fatter it's got the circular pins and that is just not what is standard out there today so we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up First, start off by taking off your top plate. You're gonna take off this one, two, three, four, five, six screws up top, and this top plate will come off. Let's go ahead and pop this off. Here we go. All right, so then you pop off these side plates, and now you can kind of get to everything down here in the middle. So normally, I tell you to just splice this onto the wire and call it a day, but because this camera, this Predator camera, actually comes with something called an OSD, an on-screen display. It's gonna give you voltage readout, which would be nice. And to do that, we gotta be able to get to the PDB. And to do that, you come here. This is your flight controller, if you don't know. And you're gonna take these nuts off. This will pop right off, and then we'll be able to get to where we are trying to get to. We popped off the flight controller. The camera wires make some way over here to this part of the PDB. So we're gonna go ahead and undo that. We're gonna go ahead and take the wire harness off of the new guy we're gonna go ahead and solder this straight onto there take your tweezers reach in put a little dab boom there goes one boom there goes another and lastly that signal wire boom and now we are good to go and it looks like there's enough solder on those pads to keep it there so the next thing we need to do measure out what we've got so I've taken the plug right plugged it into the camera the camera goes about yo you know about yay this way and then we need about this much length. And now I like to go, you know, ex you know, exact length on the wire. We can cut it about yay. And then while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and strip all of these now. And boom, there we go. So now at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume you know how to solder. Cause if you don't, I got some news for you. You're not gonna get very far in this hobby unless you learn how to solder because things are gonna break and you're gonna wanna be able to fix it and to fix it, you gotta learn how to solder. You got your black, which is gonna be ground, which will go there, that little minus sign. You got this red wire, which is going to go there, that plus sign. You got this yellow wire, which is your signal. That is going to connect over to this pad right over here. And we've got this one last wire, this uh, white, uh, no, fuchsia. purple, fuchsia, periwin periwinkle, periwinkle is what is going to be hooked up to something called v -sen. Voltage sensor. You're going to want to hook that up to this positive pad right here. And the reason for that is because this pad is what the PDB is seeing as far as the battery voltage because you want this to be whatever the battery voltage is. I'm gonna go ahead and connect these now and should be good. And I want to give a little tug, make sure everything's good. All right, so we got the flight controller back on now. I have also put on the camera onto the side plates. I 
gave myself a little bit of tilt there. I'll, I'll fine tune that as soon as I get it on there. And the last thing I wanna do, one more trick up my sleeve. This receiver is currently connected for something called PPM. Don't ask me what that stands for. You can actually hook this up for something called iBus. And iBus instantly speeds up the latency from your controlling. Massive difference, you wanna hop on over to iBus. The good news is this receiver does iBus and it's a very simple change. When you get this mini quad, you'll notice that this receiver is connected here. And what you wanna do is just simply take that out and move that to this top row up here. Plug it in, bam, you are done there. And on the flight controller side, you just want to pull that connector out and move it over to the other side, like so. We are good. We got the receiver on here with double-sided sticky tape. This was inside, but we're also gonna do with these antennas just to give you a little bit better receptions. We're actually gonna bring them outside of the quad and mount them to the arms. Now, it's not the best way to move them to the arms, but this is a, this is a step up from it just being inside, completely covered by carbon fiber. Uh, so here is your cable. We're gonna go ahead and connect that into our camera. And this little cable right here, this is where you're gonna connect your OSD controller. And what that will let you do is basically adjust camera settings. It'll let you adjust uh, or change the pilot name that's written on there. So make sure you keep that somewhere where it's accessible. I'm gonna go ahead and mount everything back up and then I'm gonna walk you through what's going on in Betaflight to take advantage of the iBus and also just a couple of other things that we can do within Betaflight without even having to upgrade yet to go ahead and get a little bit more performance out of your mini quad. As I'm putting this back together, I came to one more realization. The screws, these little guys that it comes with, uh, it's just super low quality and the tool that goes in here only goes in maybe like half a millimeter, basically making it really easy to strip out. In this bag, which your, your quad comes with, are these longer screws, and these longer screws are actually much better. The tool actually goes all the way in, so I recommend that you use these. It's only gonna take you, oh, you know, maybe three, four years to screw them in because they're so freaking long, but, it is better than scripting a screw. All right, fellas, so we got the side plates back on, and like I said earlier, we are going to relocate the antennas outside of the body of the quad, because as you can see, this quad is basically covered on all four sides with carbon fiber, and if you know anything about carbon fiber, man, it does this to radio signals. I'm gonna put them over here on the arms. Now, this is not the most ideal. The most ideal would actually be have it something like that, but, for now, you know, since we don't really have a way to mount it somewhere like this on the outside, we're gonna go ahead and put them on the arms over here and that is still going to be better than having them inside. And to do that, I'm just gonna place it right here. As you can see, I'm putting it on this side because this is where the propeller spins. That way, if you crash something like that, you won't have a prop strike. And I'm just gonna use a simple zip tie to go ahead and keep that in place. But now that I've got what I wanted to do on the quad, there's a couple of things we need to get straight here, okay guys? I don't care if you're a new guy or if you've been in the air for like a hot minute, nobody arms their quad with a freaking stick arm anymore. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and switch this up so that you guys don't develop any bad habits. We're gonna put the arm from going like this to flipping one of these switches because that's just, that's just the way it goes. All right guys, this is what's gonna look like when you turn it on. And to get into the menu, you're gonna tap and hold the okay button. We're gonna hit down to go to setup. Hit okay, and then we're gonna go over to these aux channels. Now right now, the source are these two knobs. Not good, we don't want, you don't wanna be going like this to arm, nobody does that. Let's use this switch right here. We're gonna use this switch, which is called SWB, so we're gonna go down here, click uh, the up button, that's going to change, boom, SWV, that uh, rhymes over here. Channel six, we're gonna put on to this side. This is called SWC, so let's just hit up till we get there, SWC, so we are good now. Let me show you what you gotta do, okay? And it is not intuitive, fellas, it is, it is so backwards. Tap and hold cancel. Oh, all of a sudden, it saves it. Why, why? What? Radio's done, quad is plugged up and done. Now it's time to go into beta flight to set the iBus, plus a couple of other little tips and tricks that we could do to squeeze out a little bit more performance out of your wizard. So let's go into beta flight right over here. Mm.
Before you do any of this stuff, you are going to need to download and install Betaflight Configurator. And you can do that from this URL here. And you're just going to go down to the latest version, whatever it is. And you're going to download the version that's right for your operating system. Windows users will get Win32. Mac users will get the DMG file. And Linux users probably already know what they need to get. After downloading and installing Betaflight Configurator, you're going to need to install the STM32 driver. So this is the STM32 site where you're going to download the drivers. Uh, at least if you're a Windows user, you're going to need to download the drivers. If you're a Mac user, you don't need to do any of this. Your computer already has the drivers ready to go and you can just plug in your flight controller and everything should be fine. STM is going to make you log into their website. So you're going to need to create a login. So now I've logged into the STM site. And I want to go download the, right down here at the bottom, get software, accept the license agreement. After you've downloaded the driver, you'll go ahead and install the Windows, uh, you want the Windows 8, unless you're running Windows 7, if you're running Windows 10, install the Windows 8, either 32 or 64-bit driver, depending on what your operating system is. Then plug in your USB cable to your quadcopter and you should be good to go. If you need more detailed instructions, you're going to go here to the Betaflight 3.4, 3.5 setup for total beginners video over on my channel in which I walk you through every single step. And as you can see, it's a much, much longer video than this one. But if that was enough information, then you're good to go. Uh, in case you're wondering, this is Joshua Bardwell. Yeah, that's, I thought you recognized my voice. And you're going to be seeing me a little later in this series. But for now, let's go back to these yahoos. All right, so we got our quad plugged in. Everything is cool. First thing we're going to do is go over to ports. And what we're going to do here is actually set it up for iBus now. So what you want to go is to UART3. And you're going to select Serial RX. Click Save. The flight controller will reboot. Then you go over to Configuration right over there. And then you're going to go down here and what you're going to click on is under the receiver tab, click that, hit serial base, and then you're going to select iBus and right there it's already selected for you. But just so you see, there's a couple of options there. You want iBus, bada bing, bada boom, we're going to hit save and reboot there. And once that is ready, we're going to go over to the modes tab. Now here's where we're going to go ahead and set up what we want to do as far as the switches go. Now, again, nobody stick arms anymore, so we're gonna hit that up to a switch. I'm gonna click here, and I know, because on the radio, I hooked up this to be auxiliary two, and this to be auxiliary one. We're gonna put the arm switch on this three position switch. I'm gonna explain to you why here in a second. So we're gonna click two, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this all the way over. And what that means is that in this topmost position, it is disarmed but positions two or three will mean that this quad is armed. Next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on air mode. I'm gonna put that on the same switch, but I'm only gonna put it at the top end. Now, the reason for this is because maybe, where well, you don't want air mode on, maybe you wanna perch somewhere, and turning off air mode is going to help you out. It keeps you from doing the whole bouncy, bouncy, bouncy thing. Or maybe you're trying to get into this whole grinding thing, in which case air mode being off is also going to be beneficial for you. So we're going to put that on that switch. And last but not least, we are still going to maintain our auto level mode. We're going to put that on to auxiliary one, which again is this switch. And we're just going to drag this over to this way, that way, and we're going to click save. And at this point, your radio switches have all been set up. All right, one, you were so close. Last thing, last but not least, especially now that we configured auto level to be on a switch, we wanna turn the motor stop off so that when you go to a zero throttle move like that, your motors are still spinning, the PIDs are still active, it keeps your quad in control and stable. And to do that, we go over here because by default, Eshin has decided to turn it on and you, we, we don't want that on. Let's just turn that off click save against this is in the configuration tab and once that is ready we're back to go out man this is now Ishin wizard 220 version 1.1 1 .1. all right let's go for a flight here armed taking off all right look at that i can see now people i can see let's flick off oh yeah Let's do a flip. Woo, kind of slow, but it works. <laughs> see, I like this, because now I can see. I can see what's going on. I can actually do things. 
Now remember, this is completely stock PIDs right out of the box. No need to try, no, no need to mess with it yet. Just get used to that. Oh, I forgot. 3S, 3S. Let's keep things, uh, let's keep things chill. Let's keep things chill. But as you can see, I am now kind of flying a lot closer to normal, I would say. Uh, I do feel a lot more comfortable with these trees. Hit that branch, no big deal. Do a little stall. A little yaw spin, inverted yaw spin. So as you can see, there's a lot that you can do right out of the box that don't cost you a whole lot of money. Really, just uh, just the lens change for me personally and all of the things that uh, I went through in beta flight. Let's do another inverted flip here. And as you can see, we could keep it holding. It just keeps going, not bad. And this is 3S, people. Not even 4S yet. So the rates are completely stock as well. I recommend that you just stick to the rates, get used to it, and once you start getting better at flying, you can start fine-tuning your rates to suit your needs. Let's see if I can do like a little uh, Rubik's Cube here. <laughs> All right, let's bring it back. So as you can see here, uh, I can see exactly what's going on in the shadows of the trees. Uh, and you go out to the light, I can see the light changes are immediate. Uh, I'm not getting blinded for a second or it's not dark for a second, which is huge in my opinion because you can't fly if you can't see. And this arm. There you have it, Ishin Wizard upgraded version 1.1 done by me, Oh my God, Let's go down the list really quick. Oh my grip for your battery pads, that way you don't slip. The receiver on the inside, we use double-sided sticky tape so that it's not using the battery strap. We move the antennas to the outside so they're not stuck and being covered by all the carbon fiber on the inside. Converted it over from PPM to iBus. Boom, last but not least, that camera, Rotor Riot Predator Mini. And in beta flight, very simple things. We got air mode, we turn that on. Motor stop, turn that off. So there you have it, folks. Now stay tuned because episode two, we're gonna take this over to Drew. Oh, maybe we take it over to Kevin. Maybe we take it over to Josh. I don't know, but they're gonna pick this up from where I left off. If you are interested in any of these parts, just head on over to store.rotoriot.com. You can find all of the things that we are doing to modify this quad up in that store. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see y'all later. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, are you are you recording already? <laughs> <laughs>